And I think going along with that, the internalized where you're looking at yourself and self-assessing perfectionism, uh, we often feel, but when we encounter others who are striving because of so, uh, how others judge them or because of how or they feel others should be behaving and judging others around this perfection, that can be very difficult to encounter in social relationships, romantic relationships, or in business settings. So when we look at not our self-prescribed or self-oriented, but instead we look at the social prescribed perfectionists, how do we actually manage those relationships when they're so closely tied to how they're perceived by others? And then also sometimes putting that judgment on us and in our actions and behaviors in our relationship. Yeah. And this is why the testimony of going back to Jobs is so interesting because uh, Jobs' own perfectionism was projected outwards onto other people. And, and although it created a climate of exceptional performance, it also created a climate of uh, interpersonal hostility and um, disharmony. I, I think there's a balance to be to be struck. And if you are in a, a context of extreme standards and there's a sense and an aura of perfection that's expected upon you and there's a lot of other perfectionists in your team where there's a lot of people who are putting excessive standards on, onto you, I think it's really super important that instead of letting that run its course and create all sorts of problems later down the road that we get on top of it and we talk about it. And we actually break down those expectations and describe to people exactly why they're excessive uh, and what our concerns are with these excessive goals in terms of the quality of the, the, the thing that we're creating, whether it be a you know, piece of code, whether it be a product, uh, whether it be a new innovation, whatever it is. Part of this process is that things are going to need to get done. They can never be perfect. And so it's really important to have honest conversations about what's good enough. Uh, and I think if we can do that as teams, we can break down those high and excessive standards. I think it can be more innovative, uh, not less. And as I mentioned, Jobs' way of doing things is one way to do it, but it's not the only way. You can have the same high quality outcomes, but with much less competition, stress and pressure. And that's the balance we need to strike. I think those expectations are often not communicated outside of action. So I think of a lot of our clients who are nice guys and gals who enter into these covert contracts where they behave in a certain way, in their mind, the perfect way. They're seeking perfection in their relationships, how they show up, how they serve others, people-pleasing. And in turn, they're often let down by others' behaviors when they have not actually communicated any expectations around what they want to see in that relationship. They've just behaved in a manner that they're hoping will be mirrored back to them, reflected back to them by their actions. And that lack of communication of expectations can lead to that harsh criticism of others and then in turn, criticism of yourself. Well, and also internal resentment as well, right? Because if you not express the expectations in the first place, then it's probably likely you're not going to express the disapproval <laughs> subsequent to that. And so you go in on yourself and start to resent, start to think these people are uh, not, not working hard enough and they don't understand the process and what's needed and all the rest of it. You can really start to see how internally this can breed a lot of negative thoughts about the workplace and the team. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, can't, I couldn't be more emphasize that it's so so important to have clear lines of communication both at the beginning and in the middle at the end and we have to create cultures where that's where that's encouraged right where people feel safe to express what they think is necessary and needed within teams and that 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 is created for all sorts of ways but the leadership has to lead by example in that respect and, and not only make it clear what's needed but also when they have when they've made mistakes or when we've hit setbacks or when things aren't going quite to plan that we talk about that we're open about it, even laugh and joke about it so that our whole team comes with us and they themselves feel emboldened to speak up to contribute to share ideas it's so so important to have clear lines of communication within the workplace because that's the most efficient way to get things done